little backstory to fill you all in on what's been happening. I'll start this off with the fact that I believe I've been haunted from some of my earlier memories. There have always been unexplainable sounds, shadows, or figures in the corner of my eye. As I got older, 22 male, I started to get used to these things since I could never confirm these things for sure and they never seemed to try and harm me in any way. Hell, I could have just been seeing and hearing things out of paranoia for all I knew. But these last two weeks, the activity has quickly ramped up since my roommate had been on vacation. I was accustomed to hearing things, but I could always blame it on my cat or dog. But Sunday night, I was in my room watching YouTube on the PS4. I was in a party with my friend, just talking. I then heard a very distinct, why? come from the outside of my cracked door. I'm staring at the opening as every hair on my body stands on end. My friend then says, Hey, who is that? That prompted me to jump out of bed and get my knife. I'm explaining to my friend that I had no idea who that was, and I think someone is in my house. The whole time, I'm just fixed on this cracked open door with a terrible feeling that something bad is about to happen at any second. Then suddenly, the bad feeling is gone, and I gather my courage and rush into the hallway and turn on the light. I didn't see anything. I search the rest of the house and see nothing. He said he heard it, and we both came to the conclusion it had to be my cat, making a weird noise. He's made weird ones all the time, but never like that. But I was ready to leave it at that. Two days later, Tuesday night, I'm watching YouTube again, this time with the door locked and closed. It was open because it gets hot in my room if the door is closed, but I didn't care. I was spooked. So I'm watching a pro game match, and at the end of the videos, they had time to keep you from guessing the winner of the match early by looking at the time left in the video. I ended up dozing off early in the video. I wake up some time later, and I'm just listening to the match for a few minutes to see how everything is going. I realized I'd never get back to sleep if I kept listening, so I decided to turn off the TV and go to bed. I turn around, eyes closed, because I didn't want to wake up fully and find the remote on the nightstand and try to turn it off. It wasn't working, so I figured I left the controller in front of the sensor again and prepare myself to open my eyes in an exaggerated fashion. When I open them, I see this figure standing in front of the TV. I couldn't tell if it was looking at the TV or at me. It looked like a black stick figure, but a full head of long, straight black hair. It was probably about four feet tall. In utter shock, I just laid there looking at this thing. Time goes on and on, and it doesn't move a muscle, and neither did I. I felt like if I moved, something bad would happen, so I continued to stare at the back or front of its head, still not sure where it's looking. A few minutes go by, and I realize the match is complete, and the black screen is about to pop up in the next few minutes. I had no idea what I should do. It's been about 10 minutes since I noticed this thing and hasn't moved an inch, but my fear only increased. Out of panic, I called out to it. I screamed, who are you? I got no response. It continued, just standing there. I'm still not sure what it's looking at. At this point, I could no longer bear to look at it. I closed my eyes, rolled back over, turning my back to it. In the next few minutes, the match was over, and it was silent. I hear no sound of it moving, but I once again had that feeling. If I turned to look, I would regret it. So I laid there, pretending to be asleep, while every sense was on high alert. I was starting to think it was gone when I had this overwhelming sense of presence, like someone was standing right behind me. I then felt little pricks on the side of my face that's not on the pillow. It felt like hair. The mental image I came up with from this information almost caused me to start bawling. I was starting to think I was going to die, but I didn't want to look at it. I was afraid of what I would see. 
So I laid there, still as a corpse, and heard a faint, Alice. And the feeling vanished, just like that. Still, stricken with fear, I didn't dare open my eyes. I ended up falling back to sleep. I had a confusing dream that I'll talk about if you all want me to, but I'm not sure what I did to cause this to suddenly start getting so serious, or if I'm starting to get sick with some sort of mental illness. Please let me know. When I was a kid, my mom would take me to the boathouse at the beach quite often. I remember the sounds, the smells, the equipment, and George. George was about 70 years old. He had skin like leather and a buckled jaw with large fake white teeth. He always sported the same baseball cap and had a huge grin on his face. Everyone knew George because he talked to everybody, but I remember him vividly because of the way he would flirt with my mom. My mom, being so friendly, was always very kind to him, and I guess I got to know him better this way. Throughout my childhood, I would always see him in the same spot, the same lawn chair, just hanging out. I would sometimes say hello, or otherwise just pass by. On this particular afternoon, it was a hot summer day, and the beach was jammed. My friend and I decided we'd had enough, and made our way back to my place. On our way back, I saw George sitting in his chair. At first I felt awkward, not sure if I should say hello. As I got closer, I turned and made eye contact. That's when he raised his hand and said, Say hi to your mom for me. I smiled, waved, and nodded. My friend and I got back to my place and are grabbing drinks and snacks while my mom is preparing something in the kitchen. I turn to my mom and say, George says hi. She froze. What? My mom asked. George says hi, I repeated. She had a grim look on her face and looked pale. My friend and I did not know what was wrong. I asked if she was okay, and she responded by saying, That wasn't George. You couldn't have seen him, because he died two weeks ago. I sat down immediately, broke down, and cried. It was heartbreaking, but this was out of fear. Never in my life have I felt this way. It was so incredibly vivid and seemed surreal. In the end, I guess it was nice to know he was in his happiest place, sitting in his lawn chair, looking out at the water. Rest in peace, George. For reference, I'm now 20 years old and my younger sister is 16. We grew up in a small town in the western part of Maryland. I know now that the entire town is most likely on a ley line, but I don't count that to be 100% true. What I do know for sure is that the town we grew up in was very, very weird, to say the least. Up until the age of eight, we lived in one house, a few streets over from where my parents live now. I don't remember much from this house, other than sometimes seeing a large shadow cross doorways. As a kid, I also had an imaginary friend, Sarah. Sarah was blonde with green eyes and a white and blue Victorian dress and couldn't have been older than 11. When we moved into the new house, things started getting progressively worse. Other than the fact that our new house was haunted by several spirits and had a demon in the basement, more on that in another post, I started seeing a shadowy figure following me more and more, and I dubbed him Top Hat Man. He never did anything other than follow and watch, yet he terrified me. I can still picture him in my head to this day in the corner of my bedroom. But whenever I saw this spirit, Sarah was sure to follow and he would leave as soon as she appeared. It got to its worst around sixth grade and the last time I remember seeing both apparitions, I was doing homework in the dining room and the top hat man was watching me from across the living room. Sarah, acting almost as a guard dog, was sitting at the end of the couch, a barrier between me and the evil spirit. But this time, he 
he did do something. He opened his eyes. Dark red eyes stared at me as he started to silently jolt to where I was. But Sarah stood up, put her hand up, and when they touched, poof, they were both gone. That was the end of it for me. But a few years later, I walked into my sister's room and she looked terrified. At the time, I was 15 and she was 11. I eventually got the truth out of her and she explained how she kept seeing a shadowy man in a top hat and a little girl she called Sarah. For months, she would come up to me in my room, the kitchen, even at my grandmother's once, crying, saying that she was watching her. Around that time, we also got our house blessed due to demonic activity in the house, and she never brought it up again after that. I don't know if it happened to help or not, but I think we're both too scared to bring it up. I really wish that was the end, but among many friend groups in high school and middle school, at sleepovers, hangouts, and lunches, I've had opportunities to share ghost stories, as moody teens do. And my sister and I aren't the only ones with the same experience. A total of 10 other kids my age had the exact same thing happen to them. A tall shadowy figure in a top hat and a blonde little girl named Sarah. Everyone saying the same thing. They stopped seeing them around 11 or 12 years old. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why. It's truly unexplainable. How are all these kids seeing the exact same thing? Why is it happening in my town? Does it happen elsewhere too? If someone, anyone, has answers, please help.